Okay, so welcome back. Uh, this is uh, the second uh, week module of uh, week uh, five. So we'll continue our discussion for the collection uh, system uh, for uh, municipal solid waste. So as if you remember, we are talking about uh, in terms of the trucks, how the waste will be collected. Then one of the imp one of the important point is how to route this truck because. Uh, this vehicle routing is one of a very, very critical component in terms of waste collection. In terms, of, because uh, if we can do the routing properly, with if we can reduce, as I said, the uh, number of trucks required, so that if we can optimal optimize the resources, that's always helps in terms of the uh, finance, in terms of the budget. So there are. Uh, in terms of the vehicle routing, uh, there is uh, there is a manual way of doing it. Uh, let's say there is a heuristic routing. Heuristic routing, there is some guidelines. Uh, EPA published 11 rules for heuristic routing, like what, how we should do the routing, and uh, like how should we should move the truck around and all that. And we'll we'll go over that. It's a bit it's a bit a uh, lot of text there, but I'll try to highlight some of the important stuff. But the other is important. Uh, what is what we have? What has happened over last uh, few decades is that uh, people have taken this information uh, from uh, this particular website and uh, from the particular uh, like a uh, guideline, and then they have developed a computer software. So there is a computer assisted routing. So nowadays uh, nobody actually does a manual routing. So there is a computer assisted software which takes into account all the. 11 rules which we'll talk about in a minute and uh, also some of these operation research uh, linear programming and all those uh, concept is incorporated here to come up with uh, better vehicle routing and again uh, the concept here is same as what say if you get a uh, if you are working for uh, amazon or flipkart or snapdeal and they are trying to do their logistic in terms of transportation the basic concepts are the same because we are trying to move a particular uh, uh, resource, whether you call it a waste or a product, from place A to place B, and how to do it in a more efficient way. So that's the overall uh, goal in terms of the uh, vehicle routing. So, in, so in terms of uh, vehicle routing, there are a lot of factors in the design. Uh, like you need to look at uh, loading time uh, because every uh, every house you go to or every apartment uh, complex you go to, you have to load this garbage. So you have to look at one of the factors that you need to be careful about the loading time that you are taking at uh, each one of the place. Then you avoid taking U-turns because when you're trying to take U-turns, that's actually a uh, problematic uh, in terms of uh, taking you too much of a U-turn. You are basically wasting time. You are uh, not being efficient. So you try to avoid taking U-turn. Uh, this uh, document, uh, this EPA, as you know, US, US EPA, United Nations Environmental Protection Agency. So since they travel, they drive on the other side of the road. So they are they are on the right hand side of the road. So they their right turn is uh, is is there is they can take the right turn much easily, like we can do left turn here. So the right turns are preferred. So in our case, it will be the right left turn which is preferred. So there. It says right turns are preferred because this is again uh, the information is directly from the DPA website document. So I didn't change it because just to uh, because it is uh, it should be as it is. But uh, uh, in Indian contest, we'll we'll focus on left turn. We'll not focus on right turn because that's not uh, the way we drive over here. And um, how much waste uh, can go in a truck? Uh, what should be the compaction rating? Because the trucks these days are coming with a self compactor, and uh, what should be that compactor? If you compact too much, that's also a problem. Uh, if you remember, if it's a waste is going to a waste to energy plant or waste is going to a landfill, if you have a too much compaction, then you have to decompact, even when unloading the garbage at the disposal or the treatment site. And then you should take into account the travel time uh, to the transfer station. Uh, if, if you have a transfer station, how much travel time it will take uh, to, to get there. So large communities, they, they use linear programming, uh, they especially like a linear programming network model. So it's a network consists of a set of nodes and then uh, you have uh, links showing the flow into uh, the node and flow out of the node. And then you try to come up with an optimum solution which comes with one or more path uh, consisting of set of connected link between the source, intermediate and the sync nodes. And for each node there is a flow in and flow out. 
So a network model can have multiple sources and sinks, for example, residential areas, transfer stations, uh, or landfills. And so that you can come up with uh, a nice uh, network model and uh, analyze this model and come up with uh, uh, the solution for uh, routing. So uh, some of this other data that we need to talk about that in terms of uh, routing time, uh, fact time to and from the first and last home. So for example, the collection system starts at the point, uh, like if you, the waste collection it starts from uh, the first home or the first apartment complex that truck is going to. But before it does, there is a time taken from the garage uh, to the first home. And similarly, there is a time taken from the last home when the garbage truck is full to the transfer station or to the waste to energy plant or to the landfill depending on the scenario. So both these times are also part of the route. So we need to, un we need to take that uh, into consideration. And uh, so we should try to minimize this. Uh, some of the is in our control, some may not be our control, depends on the location of the garage, location of the first houses. So, but you can, you, to the best of the, uh, based on the situation, you can try to optimize these parameters as well. Then uh, local routes, uh, you, for the local routes, uh, you need, uh, just a minute, for the local routes, uh, you need uh, input uh, from vehicle drivers. So uh, like in vehicle drivers routing uh, coefficient. So we have to, I uh, will talk about that routing coefficient. So for uh, these routing coefficients, you need, the, you need the data for the, basically you need to know how the traffic behaves in that area uh, at different time, different uh, point of the day. And that's how you decide your routing coefficient. And we'll talk about routing coefficient. Uh, uh, what, what I will do is after uh, doing this, uh, this particular uh, theory part, uh, uh, I'll have a set of problems. I'll work out set of problems uh, uh, with you on, uh, on this. Uh, so far, uh, what we have done in terms of waste, uh, how to get the waste quantity, uh, waste collection and collection system. So we'll try to do some math and there we'll talk about this routing coefficient, how we get all those numbers. So we'll, uh, we'll do some math associated with that. And then there is an unloading time at the transfer station or at the landfill. So the truck will go to the transfer station or landfill and then it has to unload the garbage over there. So that uh, unloading time needs to be taken into consideration as well. So so all those things, these are, these are, uh, this uh, uh, seems, sounds to be uh, like quite trivial, but uh, they need to be accounted for because if you miss something, you are actually, your, your uh, optimization will fail and you will have a wrong result. And then you, there is a need to consider all options, uh, especially uh, so if you're trying to develop a new integrated waste management plan for a city, we should have and I think I said that earlier as well, we should keep all options on the table. Uh, many times, uh, even uh, when we say the word landfill, as if uh, people get, oh, no, 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 we don't want any landfill in India. We, landfill is uh, so uh, outdated. Yeah, to the certain extent, I may agree, but uh, even in Western European countries who are working on waste management for last 40 some years, they still haven't been able to get rid of landfill. So. Landfill is a necessary evil, you can say that. Uh, like a, it, it's a necessity, it's an, you can say it's an evil, but at the same time it's a necessary evil. You have to live with it. So, so let's say in terms of the different options, we can go for an option of a landfill or can, uh, it should be a government landfill to a private landfill, a compost plant, we can build a transfer station and we'll talk about that in a minute. And uh, so there are a lot of uh, decision variables can be there in terms of the routing times. And objective is to the minimize the routing time because time is money. So if we can minimize the routing time, that really helps us in terms of uh, minimizing the cost. And that's important for any business. Like you need, you don't want to, for the for the same performance, why to pay more cost? Uh, so you should actually, you should pay less cost. And that's what they are trying to, uh, we are trying to achieve over there. So the constraint of the systems are the travel time. Uh, we have to look at the travel time along each route, capacity of each transfer station, conservation of material at the nodes. So those things are there. And this is an iterative process. So you design one time, you run this model, you, you let the trucks go and do this stuff. And then when the truck uh, drivers will give you some input back and how the truck had worked, you get some input back from there. Then you go and refine it. So. As more information comes from operating the actual collection system, the process can be refined by trial and error through the use of a linear programming model. 
So this is again uh, those uh, ca can be done. So this vehicle routing is very, very interesting uh, stuff in terms of the waste management, uh, which could be of a good interest to anybody who is uh, like uh, who are interested in optimization route, uh, optimization uh, operation research and those kind of work. These, these are the 11 guidelines. I will not uh, bore you with uh, reading each one of those uh, because these just came from that US EPA document. So I will just uh, highlight few uh, important stuff. You can always read it. Uh, you have the you will have the PDF slide, PDF of each slide available to you. So it uh, the thing is that uh, you should try to keep the uh, what some of the key point is uh, you should try to keep it compact. Uh, you try to have that route in a one particular geographical area at one time rather than having part of the uh, route going covering this part of the city, then it goes to the other part, then goes to the other part, then you are actually wasting time while moving the truck around. Just focus on one area and let, let the uh, truck do over there. The other truck can do over here. So those uh, that is how we need to kind of uh, design it. And uh, total collection uh, plus the haul time. Haul time is the time taken from the garage to the first house and from the last house to the landfill or transfer station. So that time is the haul time. And when you are collecting garbage at each of the houses, that's your collection time. So the total co collection time plus haul time, it's better to be equal equal among the different routes. Say if city has uh, a particular uh, city has maybe 20 routes going around uh, for the different areas of the city, all those 20 routes in terms of the time, try to keep it similar so that it equalizes workload. So that uh, it says it's all the workers have similar uh, work hours, and uh, collection route should uh, should be started at close to the garage or the mot or the motor pool as possible, taking into account uh, the travelly uh, heavily travel one way street. So heavily uh, traveled streets should not be collected during rush hour. So you don't want to collect. Uh, uh, any garbage uh, collection uh, in the vicinity of a school during the morning school hours, isn't it? It will be kind of you are wasting a lot of gas and uh, uh, gasoline there itself. So you don't want to do that because you know that during the rush hour, during the school hour, especially in the school uh, when the school starts and when the school ends, there will be a lot of traffic in that area. So you basically be better you avoid that time and you do the waste collection in between while the school is running or either maybe too early in the morning or too late in the evening but that's up to you you can uh, design your system but uh, and of course the people who will work on there so uh, in case of one way street you try to do it from the upper end of the street service on the dead end we consider uh, so there are different uh, stuff is there uh, higher elevation should be done at the start and then um, so and then you, you do a specific routing pattern. So this again, you can read through this. There's nothing uh, much uh, like, uh, there's not much complex stuff to understand. It just gives you some guideline. And as I said earlier, most of these, uh, 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 most of the, uh, most of these uh, softwares, they do take into account all these guidelines uh, when they design those uh, software. So let's look at this particular example in terms of a very simple example in terms of the waste collection system. So if you have this, as you can see on this uh, uh, screen, if you have a one or uh, one way main street with two way arterial street. So you have a one way, we have a one way main street here. Uh, that's our uh, main street going there. And then we have a uh, like a two way uh, arterial street. So thing can go on both the sides here. So Again, uh, there could be multiple uh, solutions. Here is one solution where if you have to do this waste collection system, you can start from there and then you can come here. And since this is from, uh, this example was from my teaching days in, uh, in North America. So actually, again, we have taken a right turn because the right turn is, it's a bit preferred to take a right turn. Then, so you come here, collect the garbage along this length of the house uh, and uh, on the other side, from the other side as well, then you take a right, collect the garbage from here, and uh, then you go here, collect the garbage from this side, then you go up, back up and do the collection on this and this side, then you can kind of go back and forth and do the collection uh, for, and then this is your end finish point over here. So this is one example, and here we have tried to take uh, into account all those 11 Hewitt uh, uh, guidelines which was uh, available from US EPA. Uh, so, but uh, you can still come up with some other solution to that as well. So there is no, 
uh, like uh, just one route. It could be multiple routes, uh, but uh, this is one example where you can do the routing based on that. So, so since this is just uh, like a four blocks, uh, some maybe around uh, some 35, 40 houses, or maybe slightly more. But uh, this this can be we can potentially do it by hand as well. But if you think about a big city or other stuff, you cannot really do it by hand now. You need to rely on some some computer software uh, to do that. But you should understand what that computer software does. Uh, so that you can make a good uh, uh, judgment in terms of uh, route optimization. And uh, other thing is the use of the transfer station. Uh, transfer station is the place where we say if you are uh, these days in India uh, also after the Swachh Bharat mission or even before that, this is concept of regional landfills are coming up. Say for example, Kharagpur town, uh, if when it goes for an engineered landfill, it will not only if you implement this MSW management rules properly, we'll have wet and dry separation. Wet waste would go to a compost or anaerobic digester, biomethanation, and all those kind of stuff. Wet, uh, so dry waste, after some of these recyclables are gone, then it can go to a waste to energy plant or it can go to a landfill. So, and, but those since uh, the dry waste with the uh, say amount of dry waste coming from a town should not be that much because uh, we have already taken care of the you know, food waste, we have already taken care of the recyclables. So we may not have enough capacity coming from one particular town or one particular city. So the concept of this regional landfill, which is there in many parts of the world, is also being uh, kind of uh, pushed forward in the Indian contest. So these days with the Swachh Bharat mission, uh, we were reviewing some, uh, we worked with the Bihar government on that, and we reviewed several DPRs from them for uh, Swachh Bharat mission, uh, like a solid waste management integrated solid waste management plan. And there, most of the places they were uh, they were suggesting uh, that we will try to have a transfer station. So, because what what does that mean? Uh, that these are smaller trucks, say in uh, Kharagpur town, the smaller trucks which is going around the Kharagpur town, collect this garbage and bring it to a. I'm talking about non-recyclable, non-compostable one, and it brings us to a uh, central location on maybe on the outskirts of the city, on one side of the city. And that location is your transfer station where there's a smaller truck brings the garbage from the town, dumps it there, the bigger truck comes in and the bigger trucks take, take, take this load and then bigger truck carries it over the highway and to the regional landfill. And that regional landfill is shared by several cities, several towns around it. So this is, uh, uh, then that's the concept which is being developed uh, or uh, which is being promoted uh, as part of uh, new integrated waste management plan framework including for uh, within the Swachh Bharat mission. So we did uh, we reviewed and we saw that uh, in uh, firstly so many, many of the DPRs are proposing that and actually government is, government is encouraging that and that I can understand because it makes sense to rather than having a small small landfills you can have a bigger landfill you can have a good control over there you can have an engineered landfill and that's always better. So transfer station are used to minimize costs because uh, you, you can rather than taking this smaller smaller trucks all the way to the landfill you are bringing it to a transfer station and maybe out of the material out of this four or five trucks the small trucks goes to one big truck because it's compacted as well and I'll show you some pictures of that. So it's large distances it is cheaper to haul waste in large trucks than in smaller trucks. So that's what I was trying to explain. So this is one example of a transfer station here uh, the waste is uh, so this is this elevation actually here it's a little bit a higher elevation you are at a higher elevation here so there is another road going from uh, this side uh, where the actually the big truck comes in here uh, where the waste will get uh, uh, dumped after after the transfer station these smaller trucks will will drive up to this point and they will unload the garbage and i think i may have the picture of that let's see Mm. So this is uh, one of, uh, uh, and this is the bigger truck, which is at the smaller, uh, sorry. Uh, this is the uh, bigger truck, which is at the lower elevation. The we were taking, we, well, earlier we were seeing it from this side. Uh, those picture, the earlier picture that we saw was from the, this side. So this is, uh, the, the, this, the smaller truck comes over there, which is at this higher, look, uh, higher elevation. They dump the garbage and then the garbage gets moved over here and then uh, put into this bigger truck and compacted as well. So, so that's, uh, let's see, so here the waste and then another transfer station in San Francisco, California, similar concept, 
uh, like a small trucks coming in, unloading it and waste getting into the bigger truck. So here there's a smaller truck coming in and then they will uh, unload the garbage and this garbage goes into this uh, kind of a tunnel and this big truck comes in and gets into this tunnel and gets all these garbage and uh, they are uh, from they will be lifted from these uh, uh, tunnel and put it into those bigger trucks and uh, as you can see as i told you several times if you really if you are interested in birds uh, this is one place to go to uh, you go to a landfill or go to a transfer station you see a beautiful bird right there uh, so it's uh, so the, the, if you are if you're a bird watcher <laughs> go to a waste disposal sites i'm just joking but, uh, but we do see good amount of birds over there. They get attracted to all the different kinds of food there. So this, you can see all these garbage coming in into these smaller trucks, gets unloaded. And then uh, we have this bigger truck coming in and those garbage gets loaded into this bigger truck and this bigger truck carries it uh, to the landfill or to the waste to energy plant. So this is uh, uh, typically what is happening. This is another example of transfer station in Beijing, China. Uh, I was in uh, China as well in just uh, during the summer break. So in China, where this is a uh, uh, this is Xiao Wu Zi uh, solid waste sorting and transfer station in uh, in Beijing, and it's kind of in the middle of uh, a big uh, residential area, which you will see in the picture right now. And uh, this particular uh, waste here. So this is like an approach to that uh, and they had uh, food waste separation here as well. As you can see, it's kind of very close uh, to a lot of high rise buildings, uh, but uh, it's, uh, it doesn't, uh, the smell and other things was not there as well. So probably it's, it's, it's okay. Uh, so this is the uh, facility. They have this waste coming in and then they will try to take the food waste separate and the rest of the waste gets loaded up into these uh, containers and that containers are taken away. Uh, for uh, disposal. So these are your containers that you are looking at. So this uh, uh, gets loaded up and taken away uh, in, uh, for uh, disposal at different, place, at different places. So here there's a smaller truck comes in and uh, these are bringing different uh, like waste, a lot of food waste different, uh, and that's uh, being uh, uh, collected. This passes through certain uh, uh, like a treatment or like a separation system. So you see some sort of uh, crushing is also happening over here. And here they are uh, trying to separate uh, the organic uh, from inorganic. So that's the, they have to try to separate the organic fraction. So that's what they are trying to do. So as you can see, they are trying to explain the different uh, composition. And then they have some screens and other stuff, some recyclables shows up too. So those are the recyclables should not show up. Then the, some of the recyclables are bailed or be sold off. And then, uh, those uh, the waste stuff gets loaded up and then it's taken uh, to another uh, another uh, uh, like a disposal or treatment facility. So transfer station is essentially a like a uh, it's a, as the name suggests transfer. So you're basically the waste is being transferred from one uh, truck to another truck and then the other, other truck the bigger truck carries it from the transfer station. So the waste the waste is brought into the transfer station by smaller truck. Waste is carried out of the transfer station by this bigger truck. So another example, the New York City uh, Department of Sanitation, is Stanton uh, Island uh, transfer station. So again, the New York City doesn't have its own landfill. And the Fresh Kill landfill, which was closed long ago, which opened during nine, after 9-11, but after that again, again got closed. So they don't have, so they have transfer station where the waste is collected. And then uh, some of the waste goes to, uh, to Virginia, some goes to Pennsylvania. And some of the, so whether to a landfill or waste to energy plants at different places, it gets uh, distributed. But uh, New York, as of today, does not have its own landfill. Uh, so it's, but it doesn't mean that they are not, it does not mean that they are not sending waste to the landfill. They are. So, so this is again uh, transfer station. You see the waste coming in. Uh, you can uh, see those uh, like a different uh, trucks. You see here some of the compaction in the trucks uh, on these particular points. Uh, where the pressure will show up and then uh, this uh, gets loaded up into some sort of this uh, rail kind of uh, container. Uh, so this waste uh, gets loaded up into this container. Then once the container is full, uh, we pack it and then it goes in a train all the way to Virginia. So this is getting loaded up and then it gets all the way uh, to Virginia. So that's uh, how uh, the waste is, uh, like in one of the way of how the waste is being managed uh, in, uh, in, in New York City. So this is uh, some pictures of that. 
Uh, this one is a like, an interesting one. It's in transfer station in Santiago, Chile, which is in South America. And this picture I want, uh, this actually I saw, this is a picture taken by uh, my, my professor at uh, University of Florida. He has taken these pictures. And uh, so he, he was there and uh, this is a very cool uh, transfer station. I just wanted to show that to you, which is uh, it's like a waste doesn't mean things are not high tech. Things do get high tech in waste management sector as well. So here again, uh, this is a truck which has a compactor. Uh, many times in India now also you see these kind of trucks showing up in many cities. So this uh, has a compactor in there which uh, does the compaction. Uh, so this truck is bringing the garbage uh, into the transfer station and then it goes to inside the uh, transfer station, gets unloaded. Here what you are seeing, actually that those smaller trucks are coming at, at this level. Uh, let's see. The smaller truck is actually coming in at this level, at this level on the other side. Uh, so this is where the inside this area is where there's a smaller trucks are where they're unloading the garbage. And what are these stuff over here? You will understand in a minute. And it's kind of really a cool stuff. Uh, if uh, whether you, um, I, I hope you enjoy this uh, pictures. And uh, so this is the waste coming into into the bigger uh, at the higher elevation. It gets unloaded. You can see the hole over here. Uh, that's where uh, the waste is being unloaded. You see the hole. That's uh, waste will uh, get unloaded in that particular hole. And as you can uh, see. Uh, so waste getting a truck coming in and it's opened up. They're opening the garbage and uh, it's looking at the pressure uh, in terms of how much uh, compaction it is happening. And this is your compactor right there. And if you can see, this is the compactor. It kind of goes in, try to compact as you can. Uh, and then once it's, you can see it again over here, once things are getting filled up, you uh, put a cap on it. And now if you go outside and try to see it, this is the cap was right over there. So these uh, kind of silos kind of structure is actually a big container for transporting garbage. So this uh, will be taken off and put it on the rail and then it travels nearly 300 kilometer away. Uh, so it's getting on top of the rail, uh, getting loaded up and then it travels around for 300 kilometer uh, to the landfill site, where the, the landfill site it will be unloaded. Uh, once it reaches the landfill, then it gets dumped onto the landfill site. So, pretty pretty cool. So it's this is uh, again uh, just managing garbage at different places. And if you go on YouTube, if you go and uh, look at the other stuff, a lot of uh, funny and uh, interesting stuff you will see in terms of the waste collection and uh, uh, waste uh, collection system. So here the landfill coming out. So in the transfer vehicles, there are different uh, there are trucks, there are trailers. Uh, trucks are uh, typical trailer capacity. The big ones is around 50 to 95 cubic meters. Uh, it depends on the road weight limitation because uh, DOT, especially also in India, like Department of Transportation, has certain limitations so in terms of what, how much heavy truck can go on a road. Things are also moved by rail cars and uh, they, that's how it is done as well. So, so this is a, uh, so this is how the waste is collected and waste is transferred. We will next we will look at uh, like when we can go for a transfer station. Like we'll try to do a engineering economic situation where uh, how to decide say for my city should I go for a transfer station or should not I go for a transfer station. So we'll uh, try to and I think I have a uh, math problem in uh, one of the slides just a few slides from now so we'll do that in the in the next uh, video we'll spend time on try to understand this engineering economics issue and we'll do some other math uh, purpose, uh, stuff associated with uh, uh, whatever we have collected uh, talked about so far and then once we are done about that then we'll move to other uh, other chapter so again i hope that you are enjoying the course and uh, do let us know if you want us to if you need any anything uh, from us, we have been providing you with the PowerPoint uh, slides uh, as a PDF file. There has been some reading materials have been posted as well. You, there is a lot of material available on the web through Google. You can download a lot of uh, reports and other things are there. There is a global waste management outlook. If you are interested in, the, it was done by, by World Bank. It is a global waste management outlook 2015. So two years ago they did that. I think the next one will probably will come in 2020. 
Um, I, I, I'm not sure though, but I think that every five, it comes every five years. So if you look at that, it's a very good document. You can download it for free. It's available uh, if you could Google it, uh, Global Waste Management Outlook 2015, and you will f uh, you will find the document. So you can uh, you should uh, read the document, and that it gives you a very good overview of how the waste is situation around the around the world. So that's uh, always. Uh, uh, interesting to know that how our waste situation, uh, waste management situation compares with the other countries and what they had done good which we can learn and do it over here. Not everything can be, uh, but situations are different in Western European countries or American countries over here. So, but there are certain things, certain good practices can be taken and can be adapted for the Indian condition. So, and we'll talk about, we'll keep on talking about that in the uh, rest of the course as well. So, with that, uh, let's close this uh, we, we module right here, and then again, I'll see you in the next module. Thank you.